welcome back again. So for the next session, it's for those of you who are wondering about whether you should buy a sailboat or a powerboat, which is best for a first time boater. So we thought we'd bring in the experts on this one. So I'm thrilled to announce um, and introduce Nicole Vanderwall. So she's from Engel and Volker, that's their yachting brokerage out of Monaco. And Nicole is the Asia representative for brokerage. So um, many, many years of experience and power and sale. Um, Nicole brings so much to the table. Really uh, happy to have Nicole um, on the show today. And also Alistair Brunskill. He's also a very experienced um, a country manager for Boat Lagoon Yachting. So Alistair comes from a very um, extensive factory background with Princess Yachts. And he heads up the team for uh, Boat, Boat, Lagoon, Boat Lagoon Yachting. So it's going to be a, ne a great session. So let's dive right in, meet Al Alistair and Nicole on which is best, a sailboat or a powerboat for a first time boater. Let's dive right in. So a very, very warm welcome back to this next session. So if you've ever wondered about what's best for you, a sailboat or a powerboat, we've got two boating experts in this next session that are going to help answer those questions. What's best, a sailboat or a powerboat for a first time boater? So it's a warm welcome to Nicole Vanderwall. She works for, uh, she's the Asia brokerage re representative for Enkel and, Vol Enkel and Volker. I think we just might need to uh, edit this little bit, please, uh, editors. <laughs> right. Um, it's a warm welcome to Nicole Vanderwall. She's with Engel and Volker Yachting out of Monaco, and she's the Asia Broker Representative. And also joining Nicole is Alistair Brunskill, and he's the Country Manager for Boat Lagoon uh, Yachting here in Singapore. So a very warm welcome to you both. Hi, Thanks, nice to be here. <laughs> Yeah, great, great. So um, this question about uh, sailboats and powerboats and what's best for a first timer, there's lots of people that um, wonder this question, but I really wanted to open the session with you guys and say, you know, is sailboat um, or powerboats, is it something that's in people's blood or is it more an age and a stage thing through the boating journey? Maybe Nicole will um, open up to you first. Is it in the blood or or how does this sailboat powerboat thing work well um you know con you would all expect me to discuss sailboats and be pro sailboats but i'm saying the first boat you have and that you will love the most is the boat you end up using the most okay. and then it doesn't matter sail or powerboat okay. um what um is important to know for example is that with sailing boat there is a barrier to entry um, which is the learning of how to sail all the different names, all the different riggings. Um, but to overcome that, there is a strong tradition in the sailing world with uh, club racing, for example, okay. or inviting friends on board. Or, you know, you got a lot of youth sailing programs. So people grow up with sailing. And there are more and more sailing programs in Asia um, doing the rounds and being supported by governments, uh, which is very good. But, you know, it's in the end, if you think of buying a boat, it think carefully, like, what will, do I want to do with the boat? And what will I end up using the most? Okay, so that's really interesting. I've never heard it called about barriers to entry with sailing. That's a great, great point. Ellie, what about you? Is sail or power in the blood? Or how does, how does, it, how does that go? Yeah, I'd probably say, Either or, really. I think there's no, um, how do you say, right or wrong answer in terms of uh, being a first-time buyer. What, one thing I probably would say is you probably got to see what the environment that you're in. You know, some, you know, particularly with sailing yachts, uh, you need one uh, important element to do that. <coughs> Excuse me, which obviously is uh, to have wind. And there are some areas that uh, just don't don't have the wind. So, you know, if you if you're in an area that uh, you know doesn't have much wind it's 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 pretty pointless to be to be looking at a sailboat because you'll be running on the motor anyhow um and then again it's it's uh a case of you know what what type of boating style of boating you want to be doing you know are you the type of guy who wants to get to a destination fast um you know uh, in which case you'll be looking more at the the motor yacht so i think for a first time buy it's the best thing to do is to uh view both both types of yachts motor and sail I'd even encourage trying to do some sea trials on both so that you get 
the feel of it that you know they are very different um and again it's uh it's really a case of how you see you do your voting are you more of a family type person or you like to do more entertaining and so on um and just keep your options open particularly if you're a blank canvas and you know are, are new to the whole idea of voting it's it's good to um keep all options open and see and see what works best for you sort of thing okay and no, then no, that's great yeah. so if i can, if yes, I can add to that uh, yeah. because um leaving all options open and see trials and I, I really i love that and admire it but please be aware to include your family in the decision as right, well yeah. um yeah. because i've often seen people um the man is totally enthusiastic about the boat yeah. end up buying and then um keeps pushing his family to go on board they don't like it yeah. um here in thailand it sounds so um almost negative but you have a lot of um women that married with the western men they don't understand the yachting they're not right. built grown up in a yachting uh community then they are on board and they don't really necessarily enjoy that yeah. so then rather you know go for something that is smaller in the budget you can take your friends out um or really get them enthusiastic by doing a charter first yeah. or doing a course together first yeah. so please include your family yeah. and what they like in the yeah. netherlands it's very normal that you know people go from a sailing boat together first then they move to a power boat because they have kids and the 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 optimist is on the back of the power boat okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll do the racing regattas and when the kids are bigger then they go back to a sailing boat so okay. just don't take any boat that you buy is there for life. It's, uh, it's just going to get you into right. the yachting mm. okay. at all. So sort of a bit, part of it's the age and stage thing. So what you're mentioning there, Nicole, is that, you know, maybe earlier on, um, yeah, like, I think, you know, what, what you've mentioned is it's most important to, you know, try and figure out your, your needs, but at different stages of your boat ownership, um, career I suppose over the course of your lifetime then maybe the boats that you have changed do you find that yes yeah, like um, you know when I was young now this sounds really like I'm old um, but when I first met my husband he was living on a boat a small 10 meter uh, gaff rigged a sailing boat in in the Netherlands together we bought a 42 foot um, bigger sailing boat we lived on it for I think about eight years permanently wow before we moved to South Africa. And then we noticed that the wind, like Ali already said, like the wind is a huge factor. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not okay. a hero. I didn't like the Cape Doctor gusting 50 knots. So we moved to a motorboat and we okay. had lots of fun with that. Yeah, okay, I know that's great. So Ali, in your um, experience, are sailboaters fundamentally different from power boaters, this is sort of our next question. Are, are we dealing with different people here that are fundamentally different or is it age and stage? Uh, I, I, I can only speak from uh, experience and uh, I've, uh, be, my, my background, uh, having worked at the Princess Shipyard, I, I tend to focus more on the motor yacht um, yep. side of the business. Um, however, there was a stage when I worked at the shipyard that um, Princess Yachts used to manufacture uh, Moody uh, sailing boats. Okay. Um, and it was quite interesting, but don't, don't forget uh, there is uh, so many different factors, um, how do you say, involved in, in all types of boats. And, and the particular Moody yachts that we were, how do you say, manufacturing, I would say are sort of the, the mid-range sort of, um, uh, how do you say, purchase point. Okay. Um, so when 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 we had sailing, um, how do you say, clients coming in, you could really tell that they had really aspired to buy this the sailing yacht, and it was sort of their retirement gift to themselves, sort of okay. thing. You know, so okay. for them, it was like literally everything to them. You know, they had saved right. up their money, they had the dream, they arrived, they they got to their stage, and they were also, how do you say? Um, uh, yeah, but very proud, I would say, you okay. know what I mean? And uh, whilst on the, on the printer side, it's more of a, a luxury yacht, more upmarket yacht. Okay. I would say for the, for the clients that we were dealing with at the time, it's, it's very much of their toy, you know, their okay. leisure toy and everything. So, but again, if, if you were to find the equivalent of a moody uh, sailing boat in a motor boat, you know, I'd probably argue that you probably find that the, the clients are the same. It's just their different, their different preference of, of what type of yacht they wanted to, to go for. 
Okay, um, you know, no, that, that's interesting. Nicole, what about in your vast experience of working with um, power boats and also sailboats earlier on? What's your, you know, are these different people or uh, is it in their blood? <laughs> ah, you keep coming with blood, but um, you know, but if you buy, um, if you buy a new sailing yacht, and you, a lot of the people have been sailing for years and it's uh, probably a once or twice expense they make in their life. Okay. Um, and it's, it's like a different demographic of the population for princess yachts, um, which I very admire and I've sold with uh, many pleasure. Um, people are in general more rich, have a bigger budget compared to somebody buying a, a Bavaria or a Jeanneau sailing yacht. Okay. Um, because you're talking about 250,000, 300,000 euro purchase for, for a new boat. But that doesn't, they're very, very um, aware what they want, yes. how they want it. They have, a lot of people have preferences for sales. Um, they know where they're going to sail, what they're going to use it for. And as well with sailing boats, uh, part of the reason sometimes you buy a sailing boat is because you plan to do longer adventures, okay. uh, cruise around the world, for example. You can do that easily in a sailing boat uh, on a smaller budget than um, uh, with, a, with a power boat. So yes, if you're going to be stuck in the middle of the Atlantic, you better want to know how this generator you, uh, works <laughs> and how this sail works because yeah, right. <laughs> nobody's going to be there to help you. Yeah. You can call all you want. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's uh, that's really interesting, uh, and and moving on on from that as well. So the, the sort of the idea of the pros and the cons of buying a sailboat versus a powerboat. If we were sort of to say, you know, um, say a first time boater that wanted to spend, let's just say three hundred thousand US dollars, um, and they they weren't you know particularly sure about about what they wanted. What would be sort of maybe three three pros and. Uh, maybe three pros and cons of a sailboat versus a powerboat in that in that range. Ali, would you like to do the pros or the cons? I'd probably say, obviously, uh, the three hundred thousand. You know, majority of that budget. Um, you know, particularly here in in Asia, you're looking at sort of the used market. Yeah. Um, so, with I would say with both with both the sail and the motor. Um, you know, you're going to have to look at the condition of the boat, um, you know, whether it's been well maintained. I would probably say with a motorboat, um, you know, there is more uh, on the service side, you know, okay. particularly if you've got uh, twin engines and if you've got a generator, you've got to check to see whether, uh, how do you say, the, the owner has maintained uh, a level of uh, servicing, yeah. whether they've been maintaining the boat. Whilst with the sailing boat, there, you know, naturally, of course, there is a, a lot of maintenance uh, work to do as well. Uh, but provided you've, how do you say, got, um, uh, you keep your boat in, in tip-top condition, you make sure that the sails are still in, in working order. I think, um, yeah, probably, I'd probably give the advantage more to the to the sailing yacht, I would say, in, ter in terms of that aspect. Um, because of, of lo uh, lower maintenance? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd say, I'd say because the heart of a motor yacht is its engines. Um, you know, you've you've got to make sure that uh, the engines have been well looked after and and and, and serviced. Um, you know, and uh, again, um, if it hasn't been, then obviously at that point you 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 need to undertake a condition survey, take it on a sea trial, and make sure that everything is is still in, in good working order okay. in that aspect. Okay, great. Okay, so maybe one of the pros of the sailboat at this level is um, it's going to be less maintenance than a power boat. What else, uh, Nicole, would be pros and cons at that sort of level? Okay, so if you look at $300,000... Um, say USD just to keep it global. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I agree. If you want to, with Ali, if you want a taller size, uh, you have to look at the used market. So yeah. there's definitely... Um, a connection between age and length and yes. price. <laughs> and then it's really important to look not only at what is in on the market in my area, but as well, uh, what's the best, best for my bucks and what is the best uh, condition at the moment in terms of maintenance. Um, however, 
if you have 300,000 US dollars, you don't know, you don't have an obvious preference. Uh, look carefully where you are and what you like to do. Like um, for $300,000, for example, um, I can buy a, a fantastic center console and take it out. The sailboat? Week. Is that a sailboat? A center console is an outboard. <laughs> oh, an outboard. Okay. With, uh, with uh, twin outboards or single outboard, it, uh, if you keep it under 150 horsepower, it doesn't consume too much uh, petrol the moment yeah. you take it out. Okay. So um, like, for example, where, I'm in, where I am in Phuket, yeah. Um, you go out in an hour, you sit at an island if you can do 20 knots. Um, but if you have a sailing boat, um, better buckle in for the day. Okay. <laughs> because in four hours, you actually have to turn around. Okay. <laughs> so, and you still haven't seen an island. So okay. um, you have to be, be aware where you are, what your local, what allows you in your area. Um, in Bangkok, you have um, a lot of lakes. Yes. So perhaps you can consider a boat on a trailer, you know, park right. it behind your house um, and drive it with the trailer. And you've got so many trailers with free slipways and then you can go out and you can go fishing. You can go water skiing. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's in a way a very difficult question. What yes, you're posing yes, yes, mm. yes. No, but that's an interesting uh, comment that you make about trailering it because that's also one way to keep the costs down, isn't it, if, is to have boat on a trailer. So it's a very good point, Nicole. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, so um, we've got, um, I, and I think you've both touched on this, the time that it takes to get somewhere in a sailboat compared to a power boat. So that's got to be a, a con, right? P potentially, if you don't, you know, if you want to go mm. out for the whole day, like you said, Nicole, you can get somewhere in an hour, but if you're in a sailboat, it takes much longer. So we've got the pro, <laughs> the pros of the, of the, of the power boat, being the speed. What about comfort? Which is more comfortable? Uh, I'd say they're both, they're both uh, equal to extent. I, I think, yeah. um, you know, the, the whole pleasure that both bring is, is being on the water. Um, you know, and the, you know, they both got the, how do you say, uh, uh, same functionality in terms of, you know, be, uh, having an area where you can drive the boat, having a, an area where you can dine, uh, sleep, or entertain your guests and everything. So I, I would say they're both both comfortable. Maybe that comfort can be, how do you say, um, manipulated in terms of speed or whether you're going slowly. Um, you know, I know with, with my sailing experience, it's been extremely pleasurable going at a, at a slower speed. And in fact, if you look at, uh, you know, the even in the motor, uh, motorboat market, a lot of clients now are, are, are looking to do, how do you say, their, their cruising speeds uh, much lower than 10 years ago. You know, so everyone sort of how do you say, looking at fuel economy, fuel right. consumption and everything. Okay. So wanting to take it um, a little bit, uh, a little bit sl uh, slower than uh, what you would have found, you know, back in the 90s and early noughties, uh, certainly. Uh, so I'd say that they're, they're, both, they're, both, they're both comfortable. Um, yeah. you know, what, the, yeah. what about with a sailboat? You know, I've noticed that, you know, you tend to have to go down into a sailboat and, uh, you know, some of those boats are dark and dingy and, you know, so what about that sort of, that sort of experience where with a sailboat, a lot of the living is sort of down and under, whereas with a powerboat, it seems to have sort of more of an open, open feel. Is that, is that a valid concern, Nicole? Well, you, ha you have to remember the, um, the different uses in the sailing boats um, determines a bit the design. So, for example, if you have like, um, uh, which is a fantastic boat, uh, the Jeanneau you know, Sun Odyssey, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the Sun Odyssey 40.1, it's developed for cruising. Um, you only have a few steps to go down in the interior. It's very light and bright. Um, and it's very easy to sail um, with, with small crew. But then if you look at the TP52, which is a boat really developed for extreme racing, um, first of all, the interior that there is, it's all plastic uh, and honeycomb and um, it's, it's inside, it's a constant uh, smell of sweaty socks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, go on any of the wheat bread boats, you come out gagging, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so my, maybe my impression of the, you know, those sailboats is more older boats, is it? And the more modern designs these days, like you say, there's only 
three steps to get down, whereas there used to be sort of six or more, yeah? Yeah, there seem to be always, like, like in motorboats as well, in sailboats you have the same, there are some design trends. Yeah. Um, if you look at boats from the 80s, um, the, a lot of the sailing boats are influenced by the IRC rules. Okay. So, uh, for example, the oldest ones, they all have, um, how do you say it, like a, a, a stern, no bathing platform whatsoever. Um, because um, in IRC, the rating was based on, on your length overall, um, and, and they had a negative uh, scoop. Now the IRC chain rules changed. Um, so now you see boats more wide from the back, uh, more space inside, they're more open, porty type of... Um, so there, there's some design uh, features that, that sort of grow throughout the years where you can see uh, boats from uh, the, the 80s, 70s are narrower compared to the boats we have now. Okay, interesting, interesting. So just to summarize that sort of $300,000 example, am I going to get more, more sailboat for 300000 or more powerboat for 300000 I know, Nicole, you mentioned very succinctly there that it's based on age and, and length and price, but, or, or can we not make this generalization, Ellie? Uh, difficult one. I, th I think if I look at the brands that uh, I represent, uh, and, and Nicole mentioned it, with with 300,000, you, you could get uh, quite a nice, um, I, I would say, below 12 meter uh, mo motorboat, even an outboard yeah. that's very comfortable, that's got probably two uh, very spacious and um, well fitted cabins below deck and everything. Um, but again, as, as we mentioned before, you know, if you, if you do your homework and you look around, you know, there's, there's plenty of bargains out there as well that you can find that's still in tip top condition. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I, 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 I would, uh, it's a difficult one yeah. to, 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 yeah. to put in. I think you, you, if, if you look hard enough, you can find what you're looking for in, in both yeah. those areas, I would say. No, that's cool. Anything to add there, Nicole? Yeah, I don't think you can make a, a general rule uh, that the money is the decisive factor. Yeah. Uh, because let's face it, buying a boat is very much emotional uh, decision. Mm. Yeah. Personal, very personal, yeah. I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now that's great. So we talked about the maintenance a little bit, and we talked about maybe the, you know, the twin motor inboards are going to be more expensive than the sailboat, and then we also talked about the outboard motors being, you know, quite a quite a um, good good option as well. As far as buying a boat, maybe there again the new boat, are power boats more expensive to buy than sailboats, Ellie? Um, again, depending on the brand, depending on the size, I would, I would say um, uh, historically motorboats have been more expensive, particularly as you get bigger and the main cost is uh, because of the engine. Yes. You know, if you look at uh, the market sort of uh, 40 feet above, you know, you're putting in big, um, how do you say, um, uh, industrial engines, you know, your Volvos, your Caterpillars, your MENs, your MPUs. And, yeah. That's where the majority of the cost uh, comes in, um, at least with the sailing boat. You know, they're much smaller engines, um, although you still have the similar components that you do um, ha have in a motor, uh, motor boat, for example, your generators, your galleys that have got fridges, um, you know, pods in, in all sorts. Um, motor yachts do tend to be, as you say, more expensive because there's more uh, mechanical functionality Equipment, to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, that's great. Nicole, is that sort of similar to your experience? Yes, that's good. That's, yeah, I spot on. Okay. All <laughs> right, so, spot on. Okay, good. So now another hard question for you experts. So here we go. Which boat holds its value better, a motorboat or a powerboat? And I know this is very general, but do, you, do your best on this one, Nicole. All right. Well, now this is um, something that most brokers will tell you as well is there's a general rule of thumb very much influenced by uh, the charter industry, uh, which is that um, first year depreciation is 10%, second year sort of goes down to 8%, and after five years in general, you're on 50% value. And it doesn't matter if you're a power or sale. Okay. But then, okay, then comes the other factor, which is um, original valuta in which you, you bought it in. So here we have, um, in, in Asia, we always have to deal with exchange rate differences. So it can happen that you buy a boat for a certain amount of um, Singapore dollars, 
um, but because of the fluctuation in the funds, funds um, your depreciation is less or you actually make a profit. But a general rule of thumb, uh, the depreciation of a sailboat uh, and a motorboat goes about uh, the same until they reach sort of a sweet spot at age. And then no matter what you put into it, it will not go in increase in price, but it will not go too much low as well. Um, do, you, do you mean eight? Did you say eight? As in eight, eight years? Yeah, well, okay. yeah, so like okay. eight, ten years. Okay. Um, then both seem to have like a, a basic uh, value okay. uh, for the bottom of the market and they, they will not increase or decrease in price too much. So okay. then don't, okay. one advice is if you buy an older boat and it's a project boat, please calculate on front and stick with all what you want and don't add things. Because if you go overboard with, with the project and start redecorating, it's basically just money down the drain. Right. Okay. It's a really, really good, good point there. Ali, you got any final uh, things to, to add to that particular point? Yeah, I'd probably say for, for any people who are looking to buy and if they, you know, if they're unsure whether they're going to like voting, so they want to, how do you say, protect the asset that they're buying and not lose uh, so much in terms of depreciation. Um, maintain it well, you know, because okay. at the end of the day, um, no matter what you buy, there will be, there will come a day when uh, you're going to have to sell the boat. Right. Um, and if you want to, how do you say, get the, the best return, it's, you know, keep it in the best condition as you can. You know, I always tell people that a boat is no different to your, your home, you know, so if you don't look after your home, if you don't um, maintain your home, it, it will, how do you say, um, I just say get run down and everything. Yes, it's the same yes. with the boat. You know, so, so look after it, uh, maintain yes. it well. Um, and in the long run, it will serve you well because uh, when you come to putting out to sale, no doubt any prospect that comes to look at your boat is looking at other boats. Um, right. And one thing that will uh, make your boat stand out above the rest is if it's well presented, if, it, if it's got a full service history um, and so on. And I think that will help uh, maintain this value. But like... Um, Nicole says, you know, with, with all boats through, through age, there is a depreciation value. Um, but in order to sort of fight off competition of a boat of a similar age and year and everything, you know, keep, keep, keep it well maintained and, 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 and run, basically. Yeah, that's really sound advice. So what about uh, the, the topic of um, a monohull versus a multi-hull? So uh, let's just throw this in the mix as, as well. So is, what's, what's, what are the pros and cons for a monohull versus a, uh, um, a monohull versus a multi-hull for uh, maybe a first timer or someone that's looking at their first boat? Nicole? Okay, so like multi-hulls have been um, increased in popularity, uh, not only due to charter, but as well because they're an excellent platform for entertainment. You can have more people on board um, it, there's no heel like in the monohull sailing boats. Um, but then um, for the boats, um, initial in purchase are much higher. So they cost more. And you have different things you have to think about when you sail a multi-hull. Um, for example, the pitching, the rolling. Um, if you have waves, you cannot take them always from the side or backwards because it gets really uncomfortable. Um, when you go sailing, you can't go as high up the wind as a monohull sailing up. So that determines that your, your trip uh, will last perhaps longer because you can't go into the wind. Um, but yeah, I think multi-hulls have um, gone through a, a tremendous change. And, and I love it, the fact that they are more popular because it allows manufacturers to bring more um, different models on the market right, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, Okay, great. Ellie, what's your take on mono or multi for a, for, for a first timer? Yeah, I'd probably say um, if I was looking at a first timer and focusing on the market that we're in, which is, which is Asia, um, you know, uh, catamarans are, how do you say, very attractive. I think also not only does it offer more volume, uh, but it also gives a lot of stability. Okay. You know, some people don't have good, um, good sea legs and also there may be one person in the family who really wants to purchase, but is afraid that his, his partner might, uh, might, might not like it. So you've got, to want, you've got to try and make it as comfortable as possible for everyone. And, and having good stability um, helps to do that. You know? And I think, um, so 
but again, it, it's, it's really down to the person. But I think if you look at uh, here in Asia, you know, um, it, it's, uh, I think also, you know, you know, pet brands and everything have, have become very popular. And I think it's the fact that it offers that stability and offers more volume. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice transition and, and, a, and a nice place to, to first start off with, particularly on your first boat, to, to have that space and have that stability yeah. out on the water. Yeah. No, that's great. So in your portfolio, Ellie, what would be one of your favorite boats, personal favorite boats, maybe, I don't know, 40 to 45 feet that you would, you know, that, that, that you quite like the, the look of personally for maybe a first timer? Do you have any suggestions there? Uh, 40 to 45 feet. Uh, I'd probably, I would say... Or 50, if you want to go up to 50, that's fine. Yeah, I'd probably say uh, I've probably got two, and and they are uh, motor, but yep. that that's purely because of my background. So yep. I'd probably say if I was um, looking to buy a boat, let's say in, in Thailand, uh, you know, Princess do a, a Princess B forty, um, which is yep. a sports run around, but it's, it's perfect for you know a place like Phuket where you can go island hopping. It's got two beautiful um, spacious cabins. Um, you know, two two uh, two heads and uh, a nice equipped galley, and a perfect little size for a family of uh, you know four. Uh, but again, if you bring friends over, you know the cockpit can convert it into additional berthing and everything. Um, and then again, I'd probably also say from Genoa side, the the Mary Fisher range is is very nice as well. Um, here in Asia, it's great. You know, particularly for those who want to do berthing with family, but also enjoy fishing. Yeah. Um, and yeah. with Boat Lagoon yachting, you've got like, you know, good coverage in Asia too, haven't you, Ali? Yes, yeah. So we cover, uh, our headquarters is in Thailand in, in Phuket. Yeah. Uh, we run a, um, a marina there in Phuket and also in Krabi. Okay. Uh, but we, our territory um, covers uh, uh, the, the majority of Southeast Asia. So um, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and the Maldives. In the Maldives. Okay, that's, Maldives, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And thank you. And uh, Nicole, what about from your portfolio? What would be some of, uh, you know, things to boats that stand out for you personally that you would just like to share about? All right. Well, Angle and Focus Yachting um, isn't in the 45 to 50 foot right. range. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got lots <laughs> of experience in that, haven't you? I do, yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah okay. Um, but, okay, so, um, so maybe yeah. from your experience, your past experience, what have been a cup of one boat that's taken your eye and you thought, wow, that's pretty cool? Well, I'm, I must admit, um, my personal preference, and I've been silently pushing this boat to a few people, North Haven just brought a 40-footer out, okay, and nice. it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I love, I, like my love for trawlers okay. um, is, is long-standing, um, we got a 68 for sale at the moment as well, so on so see. Yeah. But this new 40 is, is such a brave little boat. And I can see yeah. myself tottering along, yeah. you know, spending time at the islands and, and sleeping on board. It's, uh... <laughs> okay, no, that's great. And with the trawler style boats, they are cheaper to run, are they? Because they, they go a bit slower? Yes, in the general, they have a low RPM engine. Okay. Uh, which doesn't consume as much as the high RPM engines, um, which uh, typically Princess Yachts, Ferretti, Pershing uh, okay. are equipped with. Yeah. Um, so they're, um, and, but they have for a lot of people in Asia, they um, get automatically a bit um, in their mind. Um, it's similar as a work boat. So they're not that yeah. popular. You do have okay. quite a few people in Japan yes. looking at um, trawler type of boats, but here, Singapore, Hong Kong, it's mm. not that popular. There are only a few swift trawlers around. Uh, okay, okay, now that's great. So um, my sort of my final, well, my second to final question is: that, Are there any developments that are kind of bringing the world of sailing and the world of power together, or is that, uh, you know, is there any sort of developments along those lines? Nicole? Well, um, of course, there's um, some, some manufacturers try to uh, bring it together, like uh, North Haven brought out in the past uh, a motor sailor. Um, you've got shipyards that are experienced. Moody had a motor sailor for a long time, very famous. Naughty Tech in Finland had a motor sailor. Um, but all in all, a lot of the shipyards, they have their own niche. Yeah. They have their own target audience and, you know, specifically what these people want. 
and crossover is not so much wanted. Okay. Um, so it's um, you, you start building a, a product for an amount of people that don't really, you're not really sure how many people will buy it. Okay. So then you rather stay with what you know what works yeah. <laughs> and what you're famous for, what you're good at, yeah. which mm. will, you know, give you repeat sales. Yeah. So yes, there's been, um, you know, long and narrow motor sailors, uh, power cats. Um, but yeah, it's, um, in general, these are not really hundred percent successful uh, models. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes it's not good. To, yeah, I was going to say sometimes it's not good trying to cater for for everyone. Um, yeah. And if you if you stay focused on what you're good at and cater for, how do you say the the market weight, which is big enough in itself, uh, you can you can develop a nice uh, nice product and, and really capture it. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a that's a really interesting um, comments that you've both both made there. That's great. So. Um, I suppose last question, and we probably touched on it, is this whole concept of hybrids. So, you know, sort of electric, solar, um, you know, is there any sort of developments in either of your sort of portfolios that you want to share about developments and hybrids, Ali? Yeah, at the moment, uh, for the brands that we, we represent, um, the, there's, there's talk of it. There's nothing that's gone into, into full production. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you'll probably start seeing it more once the technology in terms of the battery life is um, how do you say more? How do you say can give you more output? You know, okay. uh, there there are some uh, shipyards that are are doing it, um, but really it's uh, uh, to, to have the ability to really uh, run off a, a full battery for a long period of time uh, of time. Um, yeah. that, that that's when it will start. I, I I think really taking off at the moment. Yeah. I think at, at the moment the the costs are extremely high for that, and we sort of need other manufacturers to, to come into the game and start doing it to sort of bring that overall cost down and, and make it more affordable for the mass market sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so more sticking with what's working at the moment and wait for the innovation to yeah. move along the curve a little bit more, yeah? Exactly. I think what, what one thing is evident, though, is people are becoming more, how do you say, environmentally conscious yeah. sort of thing. So although they'll still go down, um, you know, whether you buy a sailing boat or um, a motor at the end of the day, you will be using your motor on you know at some stage even on the same boat but everyone wants to make sure that uh, you know they're buying something that's uh, fuel efficient and, yeah. and, and want to be running at um, optimum speed where you burn you know less fuel as possible sort of thing so that, that's always encouraging and once you've got how do you say a market that is thinking sort of in that direction that will push the industry to, mm -hmm. to start developing you know more of these hybrids as, as, as you speak of. No, that's interesting. Nicole what about in your sort of world and all your experience yeah, so hybrids is, a, is an interesting discussion that keeps popping up and then going away <laughs> <laughs> and then comes back on. Um, I remember when I was a, when I was a child, um, you had Jacques Cousteau, yeah. who had, instead of, um, who had an, um, an hybrid in a way that he had um, sails that were sort of aeroplane wings. And okay. then later on, there was a manufacturer of catamarans in the, in the UK, and he, he actually developed a whole catamaran with two of these wings. Really? And it was all computer controlled. And then we're talking about, uh, let's not talk about what year it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> then at one stage we had Lagoon, they had um, electric hybrid engines as an option. But because of the technology wasn't right there, for mass production, okay. A, the option was very um, expensive, and B, the option didn't work. <laughs> they okay. had to bring all those catamarans they equipped with those electric hybrid engines back to the shipyard yep. and equip them again with diesel engines, simply because it was not reliable enough at sea. Because we have, we are talking about, uh, in general, boating at sea is an extreme uh, climate. We're bringing electricity in. Yeah. So if you compare now, I'm busy with, uh, with a customer for um, electric hybrid um, catamaran. And I recently spoke with uh, James McCon from McConaughey Catamarans. They did a study and uh, he shared the study with me. And if you're very interested, um, then contact me for, for any please. Um, but in general, at the moment, it's half a million 
uh, more expensive to have to convert your boat to hybrid and, wow. and have lithium batteries okay. and if your wow. budget is a million and you suddenly have for the same model you have to pay million and a half that's yeah. a lot it is it is a huge amount isn't it yeah. so it's it's not viable and it's an investment you're not getting back at yeah. all as well okay. Okay, so that. you you will at the moment it will still stay with select few yeah and in that sense, the super yacht industry is very important for the smaller boats because they are the ones pushing that sort of development forward yeah. and having the budget to develop that um, and, and making that more as a mass production. Um, but yeah, it's, it comes and goes. And Fontaine Peugeot is busy with an electric hybrid. It will come. Yep. But at the moment, it's still very expensive compared to normal normal yeah, engines okay. okay so um when so, when a boat a boat uh, searcher or boat buyer comes to you and they they're not sure whether they want to buy a sailboat or a power boat can you both just give me you know some maybe three steps that you would go through with someone to help them on that path of deciding ali what what, what do you do if someone says to you, I want to buy a boat, but I don't know what I want to buy. I don't know if I want power or sail. What would you, what would you do and say? I think the first thing I always like to know is uh, their reasons for wanting to get into boating in the first place. And I think uh, judging from their answer, you'll be able to tell whether a motorboat or a sailing boat will be more suited to them. Okay. Um, once you've got that sort of, how do you say, um, idea uh, judging from, from what they've told you, um, I would still then uh, take them on board uh, bo both types of yachts and really, uh, how do you say, pay attention to them in, in terms of, you know, get them to tell you what they like and what they don't like about both. Because then if, if they're leaning towards one or the other, then at least you can find the a more suitable model, whether it be in the motor yacht range or in the sailing boat range. So. They may, for example, like the saving boat, but they don't like it, a, a particular functionality of it. You know, maybe the galley's in the wrong area and so on. Yeah. But you'll immediately know, okay, well, on, on this other saving boat, you know, it's, it's, it's in a different way. Okay. Um, and then uh, finally, I'll probably, uh, be, being a first time buyer, get them out on the water on boat and, and, and seeing, you know, which, which is the best, how do you say, um, feeling for them, being okay. on the water and, and, as Nicole mentioned before, being with their family and seeing how the whole functionality comes together on, on both boats. Okay, no, that's great, thanks. That sounds really good. Nicole, what would be your approach? Yeah, it's actually, um, you know, when you talk with customers from Europe, they probably know everything about boats and they're very brand orientated. So it's a question you will not get um, often. Here in Asia, you do get it because yeah. people have a certain budget in their mind and they just want to go out with their friends and family. Um, and they're actually open for both of them and easily they compare catamarans with outboard boats and yeah. <laughs> extreme sailing boats. Um, what is it, like Ali said, just talking with people, with the customer, um, and, and uh, make him for himself realize what he likes and prefers and, and make it, um, may, make the picture in his mind clear how a typical day for him would be on the water if that's right. sailing or is a power and step two is very important is um go charter yes go experience it for a week for a day um because you know um if you you can talk all you want and look at the computer all you want about a 36 foot power boat flybridge isn't it but if you haven't been out on the boat you, you don't know how you yourself feel in relationship to this space. <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. And that's um, that's quite uh, quite quite enlightening, quite insightful. So, okay, guys. So the final question is, you know, maybe what's your number one or two or number one or two tips for a first time time boater, Nicole? Ah, uh, read. Google is your friend. Okay. <laughs> and um, if you if you've seen seen boats, um, see them again. And what is uh, the tip that will earn you back your bucks for guarantee is do your homework, do your due diligence. Okay. Ask 
um, questions about maintenance, ask questions about usage. Um, and something that is, um, especially in sailing boats, um, sometimes very important is um, talk with the neighbors. <laughs> talk with the neighbors, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, it will say in the marina, they always have stories about um, how owners use the boats. Um, it's not always something you, you know. Um, they don't advertise that sometimes, yeah? You advertise. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, um, boaters are often uh, very happy to talk um, about the, the different models yep. um, or what they've seen uh, the boats being used for. So. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Ali, what's your number one or two tip for first-time boaters? Yeah, probably just uh, add to that. So, you know, doing your homework is, is definitely important, making sure you know what uh, sort of model is right for you. But also do your homework on the people that you're, you're buying from. You know, make sure that, um, yeah. you know, they're, they're you know, well, well represented. Yeah. Can they offer you the after sale service that you, you'll need when it comes to boating? Um, you know, being in Southeast Asia, nat naturally you'll be voting not just only in one country, you'll be going abroad, so seeing if they've got representation elsewhere in case something goes wrong. Um, so yeah, those are the main two, just doing your homework on, on the model that you want to look into and, and also who you're make, buying from. And make sure you've got the good, the good backup and yeah. the good relationship. Yeah. Well, I'd really uh, so much like to thank both of you. The, the session's been really insightful, hugely valuable. There's so many tips in there that people can pick up on. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you at mm -hmm. the Expo. So thank you so much, and um, we'll see you on the docks. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Dion. See you. Okay. Bye care. for now, guys. Take care. Yeah.